Well, I think there's a there's a sincerity to um, to to me as a person, and therefore to the things that I make. Um, you know, there's a earnest quality, uh, an honest quality, um, and I think that people feel that. Um, you know, in general, in life, when when something has been made with care, I think people feel that. And I'm working on a, a project that's not finished yet, uh, which will be called In Fragments. And um, I just want to give you a glimpse of uh, 150 images from it. Um, I've been working basically on a series of rituals that have had a lot to do with transforming materials uh, from one state into another state, uh, especially a glassmaking process that I worked on with a local glassblower. My understanding of ritual is that it's an accelerating force that you can add to an intention to make it have a greater impact in the world. So it's like you begin with an intention, which is the seed, and then you design a, a ritual around that intention, which goes <laughs> and makes the intention travel. And people receive that um, intention through the amplification of ritual. And in that sense, it has a transforming effect on, on, on reality and on people and on people's experience. Yeah, you know, the top 10 um, was, uh, was a wonderful process putting that together. Uh, I, um, I'm not a scholar of, of film history, so I, I didn't um, feel uh, qualified to put together any kind of exhaustive historical list, so I didn't even try to do that. Instead, I thought, well, I'll put together a really a personal list of, of 10 things that have had a big impact on, on me. I mean, they're really all amazing, but um, Koyana Skatsi is maybe a favorite of mine. Um, if you know, if they haven't seen it, it's a it's a classic, um, but just uh, epically um, powerful and, and beautiful um, depiction of how humanity is affecting the earth right now. There's a part towards the end of the film where um, uh, the camera is showing. Uh, cities from above, looking down at the cities, the grid of the streets, and then after showing a few cities like that one after another, there's a cut to a computer chip, and you realize that the aesthetics of a city from above and the aesthetics of a computer chip are very similar, um, with the right angles and the avenues and the streets, and um, and of course, you know, you infer, oh, therefore we are living in computers. I think you know that's an insight that many people feel, like we're cogs in the machine or we're. Um, you know, guinea pigs in the lab, whatever metaphor you want to use. I see documentary as um, just a way of looking at life. I mean, it's, uh, it's working with reality as the source material rather than with fiction as the source material. And so in that sense, um, whether it's a format of a 90-minute film or the format of a data visualization website, to me, those are doing very similar things. They're just using the act of framing as a way of looking at part of reality. And um, the interfaces that we design as data designers um, can help reveal those insights by making the data more accessible, more beautiful, more poetic, more fun to navigate through, whatever. So this led to a kind of a breakthrough project for me, which was called We Feel Fine, which basically was like a search engine for human emotions. Uh, it works by scanning all the new sentences that are posted on blogs every uh, two or three minutes, looking for any sentence that contains the phrase, I feel or I am feeling. All of that information is saved in a database. Uh, it's, you know, tens of millions of feelings now that have been collected. Well, we think of data as being a cold thing, and yet when you think of what data is, um, in some cases it can be things like sentences, photographs, journal entries, personal ads. Um, it can be these very um, touching um, pieces of self-expression at times. And I think especially in my earlier work, I was really enamored with the poetic potentials of data and that data was like the, uh, the footprints that we were all leaving behind uh, on the internet, and so it was the easiest way to, to study that uh, species as a, as a whole. 
you know, I, mo I moved home to Vermont after years living in New York City and other places, and then my mom died the day that I moved home. Uh, she died in the afternoon about 5 p.m., um, about an hour after I finished unloading my moving truck. The timing of it all just felt um, so strange and surreal and very much like fate unfolding. And, uh, and I had this moment with her, um, and I felt this strong, strange desire to open her eye and look in her eye. Something in the eye was not the same anymore. It was um, missing something that it had had before. And in that moment, I had this really uh, clear, strong um, insight that, um, that our bodies are, um, they're like our, uh, our spacesuits that allow us to, to stay here and breathe the air, eat food, talk, have experiences, experience time, experience memories. Uh, and in that sense, I had the feeling that these are the ultimate virtual reality machines <laughs> already. It's almost like the promise of starting over and building a new world from scratch um, that doesn't have all the problems that our, our world has. Um, no virtual world we will ever create will even begin to approach the subtlety and beauty, the elegance and vastness and the complexity of, of this world that we already have. So to, to overlook that um, feels mistaken to me.